This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest deck that I am running. That's right, we've gone back to ye good old days of normal summon Alistair. So for those of you who have been following the channel, you may understand I was playing Sword Soul right up until a couple of weeks ago when I realised it was absolutely fucking dog shit and I couldn't play it anymore. Seriously, the only viable way to really play the deck was to play the 60 card variant with Brave and basically just 10 years, at which point you might as well just play a better deck, which is basically every other version of that deck. Unless, of course, you're one of them colossal cranium guys that just somehow opens god hands all the time. Seriously, you've seen them. They do exist. But I digress, I'm not one of those guys, so I'm playing something that continues to be mid-rangey, but doesn't just auto-lose to every hand trap. Now it goes without saying that the reason that this deck is not a top tier deck is, well, because it does lose to hand traps as well. Which is a bit unfortunate, but it does feel like you have some ways to play through them a little bit more so than you did with just bog standard Sword Soul, which is something that the deck has really been frustrated by this format. That and of course, you know, Scythe still existing. Whoever the fuck thought that was a good idea boggles the mind. So I've taken this deck now to a few locals, which have been a bit of a mix and match, and much the same for my regional and the OTS Championship I've attended. And both of the more premium of the events, I guess you could say, we ended on 2-2-2, two, two, two. that is two wins, two draws, and two losses, really annoyingly, which seems like a bit of a fucking curse. But then Locals has been, well, Locals, and I either do extremely well or extremely terrible and most of the time when I'm losing, I wouldn't say it's necessarily through misplays, because it's actually kind of hard to misplay with this deck. You know, because it's so fucking linear, which is exactly why I'm playing it. So most of the time when I have been losing, it's either two hard bricks, or one of those games where you do open only the really one line of play, and your opponent happens to have the hand traps for it. Of course, there are occasions where the opponent just opens God Hand, and there's nothing you can do. There are bad matchups too, and of course, you still can misplay. It's not impossible to do so, even with this deck. But anyway, I've definitely been waffling on a bit too much. This is more just for those of you who are interested in the journey that's took us to this point. So I'm going to share with you my refined current build for this deck. Of course, if you're someone who's out there playing the deck, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think works well for you, what you don't like about my build, what you do like about my build, and things maybe that you hadn't thought about trying. Now, quickly, before we get stuck in, I promise I will shut the fuck up after this, apart from about, of course, the things that you're here for. Check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Seriously, if you're looking to get some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, Jam Jam Cards UK, link in the description. Use the code RUFIO15 for 15% off your order. But anyway, as promised, I'll shut the fuck up. I'll get straight into the deck profile. Okay, so here is the deck. Much of this are kind of standard as to be expected with this deck. I think in a lot of ways it's solved, but there are one or two things that I'm doing differently. So hopefully I can share that with you as well as some thoughts on things I might try out and see how I get on. Areas where I think the deck is weak and maybe we need to kind of focus on and all of that good stuff. So we'll start off, of course, with the main deck. Okay, so in the main we have our invoked package. I would say this is pretty self-explanatory. One, two, three alleys. One, two, three meltdowns. Two invocations. Uh, pretty standard, of course. Two invocations, absolutely fine. The third you never want because on its own, it really doesn't do anything unless you're playing the mirror match. And of course, triple copies of Alistair because you just want to see it. It's consistency. The important thing here is that you need to see this engine. This, of course, helps you get there. This, of course, is, well, another way of getting there. Uh, and this does, well, nothing really on its own. So just two copies of this is more than enough. And really, we just want to see these as much as possible alongside our other engines. Opening both parts, of course, is absolutely insane. 
On to our Dogmatica package, we are running triple copies of Eccles. Uh, she's good, yeah. I mean, she's the second part of that engine that you really want to see most of the time. You go through your normal line of plays, and then you just spec her for free at the end and go through all that line as well. Just really, really solid. I think the third one comes up a lot more than it used to. We used to only replay the two copies of this, but the three is definitely something you want to do now. In a slight change from the way we normally do things, we are running two copies of Maximus in most games. This is incredible. The only downside is that when you play into the base deck, a lot of the time they run the Herald as well, so that they can get, they basically get a free search out of it. it. Means they don't lose as hard, but you know, being able to rip this multiple times against certain decks is just insane. It's an extra free body which can come up quite a bit as well. And against certain decks, it just auto wins because they lose key combo pieces. It's just too strong, and of course, you go plus off it as well. And then finally, our Fleur de Lis to make up the monsters for this engine. Honestly, I just want to see these as much as possible alongside everything. They can become a lot of the time a second way to get a body on board to go into the likes of Vert. So something to keep in mind. For that reason, I'd actually consider running one of the other crappy ones. But honestly, the others are just too bad to make it, you know, even worth justifying. We then run, of course, our two copies of Nadir Servant. Uh, two is all we can run, so we only run two. And finally, we are running the single Punishment. Punishment's a weird one in that it's actually one of those cards that I've considered cutting multiple times, um... But, I don't know, game one, it can kind of be, you know, it's just good. It is just good. If you've already seen everything else you need to, it's a good option. Um, it's definitely one, though, that I would probably consider cutting, maybe if I wanted to fit something else in, or maybe if I wanted to trim the deck a little bit. Now, of course, rounds off our Dogmatica engine. Let's move on to the next. Fusion Destiny and Pals. Of course, this engine. Uh, what, what do I need to say about this? Absolutely fuck all, really. Um... This engine is just dumb. Of course, some people prefer Dragoon. Um, Dragoon itself is probably a bit better than DPE, just on its own. Um, but this package just gives you too much value. I mean, these are like... These are less bricky than the other options. This is even okay. Like, the effects are all okay. And, of course, the fact that it says draw two, as well as having constant interrupt on the field, something your opponent normally has to throw multiple interrupts or multiple resources into dealing with is just absolutely insane. Then we're onto the hand traps. So triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Um, really strong at the moment. And of course, its hand trap format again is back. So three of these, absolutely perfect. Triple copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Uh, again, really strong this format. No doubt next format, nobody will touch this card at all. That's just how it works. Finally, triple copies of Nibiru. This is one that has been flipped and flopped a few times for different events. Overall, the general consensus that I'm having so far is that it's really good game one, and you usually just take it out afterwards, unless you know your opponent just isn't going to respect the card, in which case you keep it in. But yeah, it's, it's really strong to have in game one. Of course, the likes are base but up in the gate first, but it is one of those things you just kind of ex have to accept that when you don't play those decks, it usually wins those games. Then, of course, we have triple copies of Infinite Impermanence, the final hand trap, the one that doesn't lose to TTT. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, it's pretty standard here. Of course, these can all be sided out and swapped around and changed according to taste. That's just the ratios that have worked well for me so far. Then onto the remainder of cards for our deck. Uh, one more field spell here, Mystic Mind. Don't give a fuck. Um, I've had people tilt off this. There was a game at the OTS Championship where I made my opponent scoop by asking him how many cards he had left in his deck. He refused to tell me. Uh, he knows exactly who he is. I hope he's watching this so he understands the lesson to be learned here. That it's public knowledge you have to tell me. And no amount of counting your other cards will give me the right answer. Just count how many cards are in your deck. And if you have less and you don't have the out, which you don't, just scoop the damn game. And you take this after game one. Unless your opponent's an idiot and you know they don't play back row removal. In which case you keep it in and get free wins. It's great. But a lot of the time this is good. Of course, you can clear boards with the likes of just Purgatrio. So if your opponent has multiple monsters, you can actually just clear the board and win under Mystic Mind, which is kind of nice. Comes up a little bit. And if nothing else, the games where you don't see enough of your engine, the amount of times you can just vomit everything into the board, play this and just sit for 10 turns where you get all your resources, clear your opponent's board. I've done it twice against based in recent weeks, and it felt beautiful every time. A single copy of Terraforming, uh, just a consistency card, not much else to add to that. And speaking of consistency cards, of course... Triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. Um, this was less good more recently. Until I made some changes in my extra deck. I was playing Super Poly before and it's something that I've cut. Uh, because the extra deck was just too tight and it didn't feel powerful enough. There was games where it just like auto won. For example, uh, I got rid of a Baron by summoning Droll and then uh, Super Polying those. Or summoning a Crow and then Super Polying that with something else. It's just, you do get some crazy interactions like that that are great. But for the rest of the time it's not that amazing. 
With prosperity in here and having more space in the extra deck, it means you're more likely to go for six now than you were before, which just boosts your consistency overall. Then we have triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. If you can't afford this, get Chalice. Chalice is good enough, uh, but this is just, of course, better if you've got access to it. Just a power card, not much else to add. A single copy of Call by the Grave. Hand traps are everywhere. A single copy of Feather Dust that I wanted some macro removal. And uh, I was maining three Cosmics before, but they felt too bricky in this deck. You just... The, the, the kind of cards you can't really run as a three of. You don't really want to see them all the time. This should just get you out of a pinch, but most of the time you don't even need it. And it felt like the three Cosmics were surplus to requirements in most games. Our final card, of course, should all schism, uh, because Wind is a card. Uh, yeah, this is really good. The certain decks just can't deal with this card, so I think you have to play it. And, of course, we don't play the other dolls, which I know some builds do. This one doesn't, but this alone is good enough. That does make up our main deck. If I'm not mistaken, it's a solid 44 cards. That may have changed, though. Again, I have been making chops and changes over recent weeks. That may be inaccurate. Apologies if it is. On to the extra deck. So, Almirage for the combo. I guess you call it a combo. Normal Summon Alistair. Make these two. You've got access to Perga Trio or Mechaba. Something like that. Uh, Predaban Vert Anaconda. Not much to add there. You know what, exactly what it does. Uh, a single copy of DPE. Yeah, it's DPE. We have two copies of Mechabub. We were running one before. That was absolutely not great. Two comes up a lot more than I expected. When we were running Super Poly, we didn't have the space for it. Um, we were also running Raijin before, which didn't come up enough either. So we cut that as well. Um, yeah, two Mechaba is great, and yeah, it was probably correct to run this from the start. Uh, Orgo Aedes, this is absolutely bonkers, and nobody respects this card, and they're stupid because it is just simply insane. And finally, Perga Trio, the card that I was not running before, but invoke poor Code Dio, because that is exactly how they feel when you clear their fucking board. The amount of games I win with this now is just unreal. Again, nobody respects the card, and by the time they do, it's usually too late for them to do anything about it. On to the Shadows in the extra deck. A single copy of Construct, a single copy of Apcolone, and a single copy of Winder. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory. This one doesn't come up an awful lot unless you need to get rid of the... Or if they get rid of the Schism, this allows you to get back into the plays. Uh, and of course, you can recycle these with the likes of Omega, which we're playing now as well, which is really cool, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But yeah, again, the three Shadows works absolutely fine. Of course, if you run more dolls, you'll want to run more of these. Now, onto Omega. Omega goes with our other targets for Nadir's Servant and Punishment. This is really, really good for if you can bake DPE. You can shuffle it back. And they never, ever, ever have a way to put it back. Or put the materials back, rather, so that they can play it. So this just normally gets rid of DPE for you. You can also recycle your own stuff. So, for example, if you need more copies of Entis, this can give you another way to get there. It can put back your Shadows. It can allow you to just recycle really good materials. It can do stuff like if you end up in a situation where you've got uh, Invocation and Alistair both in the grave at the same time and no way to recur them, it can give you those options as well. Yeah, it just does an awful lot. And, of course, if you can make it, which you can in this deck, then, yeah, it's great for that as well. Uh, speaking of Enders, of course, we run the two copies of that in two different rarities, just to piss our opponents off, and then even in two different languages. Really, really good. Sponsorship paying off, guys. Uh, and a single copy of Titanoclad, or, or Bastard the Ashen Dragon, as it was called before. Uh, yeah, I don't really need to elaborate on this, I'm sure. That is the extra deck, of course. Like I say, before we were running Super Poly with Associated Targets, we were running Raijin before um yeah just not strong enough so we decided to cut them and play better cards and it's paid off so far seems okay on to the side deck so mostly just go second cards as we need options uh pancratops yeah pancratops is pancratops pretty strong uh we have gamma uh all three copies of that of course and then naturally the one you actually open which is driver incredibly strong at the moment very very good and of course if you do get to make it in your turn which people will hand trap you i promise and you make this then you're going to Omega them as well. And then that means your other drivers are live as well for later in the game. Yeah, just really, really strong. And of course, if nothing else, you could always do this and then just make Vert and then you've got free DPE. Pretty good. Uh, we have triple copies of Droll. Um, the one other hand trap that I really wanted to play, it was a case of picking one that was just really high impact. Um, Bell's okay. Vela's okay. I was playing Crows before they were in the main. They got swapped out, rotated and... Ended up in the middle of nowhere. Then I had a swift box on the side. Droll was the kind of one that was like is just high impact. Um, the games that it's good in, it auto wins. I felt like I was losing a lot to decks like Flunder. Um, because 
the, the reality is if you're not playing at the very top tables, which I'm usually not, you then go on a bit of a weird run where you play loads of like Rogue and Tier 2 decks, which is about where your deck should be. And you just auto lose those if you don't have certain cards like Droll. But otherwise you would womp them. Uh, and you play stuff like Droll and you get free wins against them. So I think it was just like, what's the most high impact one against those weird decks that I just otherwise lose to where this is an equalizer and Droll is that equalizer. So again, stuff like Flunder just absolutely cracked. You then have triple copies of Cosmic Cyclone. I'm scared of Eldritch and Pals. Um... Not just Eldritch, though. There's other decks that this hits. Uh, any kind of back row decks, of course, it deals with that. It's just really nice. Of course, they're all playing the fucking Heavenly Prison, guys. So you can't, like, just twist your way through it or Lightning Storm your way through it. And the Banish is relevant a lot of the time as well. Even stuff like DDD, you can hit the scales, um, which, again, just gives you better options. Just just stuff to think about. Run triple copies of Evenly Matched. Um, this is for much the same reason as the above. Again, I expect to play a lot more Rogue decks because... I'm not as good, so I'm not usually at the top tables most of the time. So I'm usually playing worse decks that lose to cards like this. So you just have to play it. This could be anti-spell fragrance if you prefer, but I think that hurts the deck too much. So probably don't do that, but this works well enough. And our final card is a single copy of Red Reboot. Again, just fuck trap decks. I mean, if I play Altergeist, it's going to ruin my day of a lose to them, which I'm probably going to. So I don't want to play decks like that. And if I play Eldritch, I want a free way to win. We play that stupid fucking Dino deck that's you know, survived our deck. I want to be able to beat that too. And yeah, there's a bunch of other decks that, of course, this just helps you deal with. So that duel list does it for today's video. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about what you'd like to do, what you wouldn't like to do, maybe learn some of the lessons that I hadn't up until more recently. If you've got any suggestions about things that you would try in the deck or things that you're running that work really well, or maybe there's some things you disagree with, I'd love to hear it. I may well very much ignore you because I'm that fucking guy, but I can at least pretend to listen, of course. Now, hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, if you haven't already, you'd most definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell, or at least you possibly hate this video enough that you couldn't look away. Whichever one of those it is, thank you very much for making it this far. You're one of the few who actually does. But that's enough rambling on for today's video. I'm getting very tired, and this cold is absolutely kicking my ass. So let's get the fuck out of here. Thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.